I'm a former visa officer, and in a lot of places around the world, there is a long wait time to get a visa appointment at embassies and consulates for your US visa interview. What do you do about this? This year, 2023, hopefully the situation is going to get better. We've spoken to a lot of people who have told us that they are working on the situation, that wait times are going to come down, that administrative processing times are going to come down. However, for the moment, there are still many posts around the world where a visa wait time is over 800 days, nearly three years before you're able to secure a visa interview slot. So what can you do in this situation? You have two options. The first, is to request an expedited visa appointment. Now, there are a couple different reasons why you might qualify for an expedited visa appointment. Go to our website, check out our blog. You'll find articles talking about what exactly those, those, those criteria are to qualify for an expedited appointment, but they're basically an urgent work meeting, uh, an illness of someone in the US, going for medical treatment for your children, um, anything that's urgent, you can put in a request for an expedited appointment. But, and this is very important, it's up to the subjective judgment of that visa officer, of a visa officer in that consular section where you're applying, whether to grant you that expedited appointment or not. There are going to be a lot of people requesting expedited appointments. In fact, um, I'm going to uh, guess with near certainty that about 80% of people who are applying for a visa at a post where the wait time is over 800 days are also putting in an expedited request because no one's planning to go to that appointment two, over two years in the future. They want to apply for that two years in the future and then get an expedited appointment so that they can get their visa now. So you're in competition against everyone else who is applying for an expedited visa appointment. That means that your request needs to, one, be well-written. It needs to be well-written or it's not going to be taken seriously. Two, you need to have a real valid reason. And three, you need to present that real valid reason in ways that satisfy the requirements for the expedited visa appointment, appointment request so that it makes it easy for the visa officers and the consular officials to approve your expedited visa appointment request. That's the key in the visa appointment, in the expedited visa appointment request. Everything is about making it easy. Make it easy for them to issue your, your visa by presenting your highlights to them up front and proactively without them having to ask for it. Also, make it easy for them to approve your expedited visa request because you've presented it in such a clear and convincing way but maybe you don't have a qualifying reason. Well, if you don't have a qualifying reason, you're not going to get your expedited visa request approved. You should not try to invent a reason that's not real because then when you're asked about it at the time of your interview, you may come across of having, as having misrepresented in order to get that expedited visa appointment slot and that's not gonna go well. At worst, you're gonna be hit with a fraud charge and maybe be banned from getting a US visa for the rest of your life. So what should you do if you don't have one of these reasons that qualifies for an expedited visa appointment slot, but you still want to apply for your visa, your only option is to apply as a third country national. That means applying in a different country from where you are a citizen or a long-term resident. That means that you're applying in a place where you are a stranger, you're a tourist there, the visa officers are trained to interview people who are citizens and residents of the country where they are doing the interviews. Let's take a, an example, India. The visa officers in India are trained to interview Indians. They're trained to interview people that have lived their entire life in India, who are part of the Indian economy and society. That's how they gain their confidence when they're making visa decisions about whether or not they're making a good decision. Now, let's say that someone from, uh, let's randomly pick a country, Mongolia. Someone from Mongolia comes into the consulate in, in Mumbai and they're applying for a visa. Well, that visa officer in Mumbai has seen tens of thousands of Indians who are applying for visas. They feel quite confident when they run into uh, a situation with an Indian visa applicant that they know how to deal with it. They know how to understand the context. With a Mongolian, however, they don't have any confidence. So what that means is that the threshold for making the visa officer feel confident enough to issue you your visa is much higher. 
What do you have to do? You have to be much more convincing. You have to be proactive. You have to assertively present your credentials, present, present your highlights, present your strengths, so that that officer who's already got a l lowered confidence because you're from somewhere where they are, they are not an expert, where you can make them confident and comfortable with you being a visa applicant in that country. Now, which country should you choose? That's also a very important question. You should choose a country, one, where the visa officers are going to be familiar with people from your country. Geographic proximity is one factor that comes into play there. Uh, also, just in some places, let's, let's say London, uh, they're used to seeing people from all over the world. So some cosmopolitan posts are good choices. Other ones will be posts that are close to your country, even if it's not inside your country. Now, if, you're, if you've got multiple choices from there, where else, what else should you consider when you're deciding where to go apply? Well, the larger the post usually, the better, because the larger the post, the more visa officers are there, the more visa applicants they do interviews with, the more knowledge they accumulate, the more experience they have, and that means that they're going to be less shocked when they see somebody from a different country come in for a visa interview. Those are a couple of the principles that we employ when we're helping our clients decide where they should apply for their visa. If you want help, you know where to find us. Go to the link in our bio. We're former visa officers. We've worked all around the world. We know how to help you get your visa issued.